Hello again, I'm Greg Davis. Welcome one and all to Taskmaster. This series we've been experimenting with slimming down the show's opening monologue. <laughs> <laughs> Our five crucial contestants are Alice Levine, <laughs> Asim Chowdhury, <laughs> Lisa Tarbuck, <laughs> Russell Howard, <laughs> and Tim Vine. And next to me, obscenely obedient, and believe me, obediently obscene. It's little <laughs> Alex. <laughs> this is proper banter time now. We're on camera, and this is when the fireworks start. Okay, ready? Yep. Are you are you wondering what that smell is? Oh gosh, yes, I am. Well, I've invented a new scent. Yep. And I thought I'd show everyone tonight. There it is. It's my new musk. It's called well because it's my musk, it's called Alsatian. <laughs> it's very me. And it's actually, it's not after shave, it's before shave. You spray this on like, a couple of minutes or a week or two or maybe a year before shaving. And it's scientifically proven to cling to your, to your beard because it's made of deodorant and glue. So... <laughs> so that's it. Is that the end of this banter? Yes, but there are two more scents to be released later in the show. Oh, oh man. Yeah. Yes. Good. Well... Good. <laughs> OK, we're going to start with a prize task, if you want. So our comics aren't just taking on our tasks to win Greg's Taskmaster trophy. There is the added bonus of playing for one another's personal possessions. Tonight, we've asked them to bring in the best hairy thing that isn't alive. <laughs> right. So the winner at the end of the show will take home a load of hairy things. <laughs> and today, to kick things off, I choose Lisa Tarbuck. My hairy thing that isn't alive is a collection of FaceTime wigs. Oh. <laughs> I FaceTime mum uh, virtually every other day. So if FaceTime goes, get it, I keep them in the kitchen, put a wig on so that oh. when... It kind of freaks mum out, but not <laughs> that much. <laughs> I like the way you delivered FaceTime wigs as if they're a known <laughs> thing. Are these all in your kitchen? In a bag, yeah. <laughs> Why not? That's him. <laughs> My uh, best hairy thing that isn't alive is a life-size cutout of me. Let's have a look. Yeah, yeah. this is it. Yeah. yeah. Wow. What's that up my arsehole? <laughs> That's propping you up. Oh, right, OK. Yeah. Right. It's a lovely item, but <laughs> it doesn't look especially hairy. Well, mate, you ain't seen my back. Well, yeah. <laughs> I'll have to take your word for it that underneath your clothing you're a hairy man. Cool. Um, Alice. Well, I figured you'd want something special. Me and something personally. You personally. I do. So I have gathered um, hair from my hairbrush and from the uh, plug hole of the bath and shower, and I've formed it into a little, um, little ball, little clump, and you can maybe put that under a bell jar or display it on your coffee table. <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> from your shower or...? Shower and bath. And bath. Yeah. Very good. Um, thank you for your clump of hair. <laughs> uh, Russell Howard. A life-size Chewbacca. Let's have a look. Wow. Ooh. It is huge, and you can wear it. Imagine what would happen if you put that on when you're on the phone to your mum. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that looks like the back of a woman's head, and you're following her, and then suddenly that mouth opens, and you go... <laughs> <laughs> ah! <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Stop following me. <laughs> OK, there's one left. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, Tim, isn't it? It's actually a genuine hair from Elvis. Shut up. <laughs> it's in that little round bit at the bottom there. Oh, There it is. God. <laughs> Please tell me that that hair was caught in a trap. <laughs> <laughs> that would be the most amazing thing. <laughs> I mean, there are several... Reasons why you might say, I bet that's not his hair. Yeah. One of which being, I bought it in a shop in Manchester. <laughs> but, <laughs> but no, if, if you look at the back of that, uh, which you... you and and you, I will. Exactly. You'll yeah. see that there are various letters that are signed 
but one of them says that the uh, the foremost collector of hair, he says it's real. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it. Are you ready to score them? Yeah. Okay. I feel bad doing this because I've uh, we've only done one show, but I've grown to like him very much. But oh, um, for fuck's sake! <laughs> 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 Sorry, mate. There's no hair on, on a cardboard cutout of you. It's, it's hairy, hairy though, right? It's got. It like, looks hairy. Yeah, it looks. But mm. it is yeah. cardboard. But though. it isn't hairy. Mm. Okay. That's one point to Asim. One point. Yeah. Mm. I was thinking I was going to put Alice fourth because I was expecting the, the image to be much more disgusting from right. her furball description. <laughs> right. No, I think I might give her joint fourth. Oh. With Russell, because it's not Chewbacca, is it? It's just um, a woman with a massive mouth in the back of her head. <laughs> and then I actually found Lisa's story heartwarming, because I like the idea of her making an effort to wig herself up before she talks to her mother. Wig herself up, you said. Yeah. yeah. OK. But I, I have to accept that Tim's Elvis hair is real for his sake, because <laughs> I don't want to see a grown man cry on television. <laughs> OK, so it's four points to Lisa, Yeah. five points to Tim Vine. There you go. One, two, three, four, five. Good, let's start with our first task proper, Alex Horn. I think you mean, let's play darts. Oh. Oh. <laughs> what do you got me? Shit at darts. Hello, Alice. Hi, Blossom. Isn't it a horrible day? Thank you. You know playing darts outdoors is... You know why people don't do it, don't you? Why's that? Get the highest score in darts. You can either throw one dart from one metre away... Three darts from 2.37 metres away, or 60 darts from 10 metres away. When throwing, please stand behind whichever distance line you choose. You have a maximum of 10 minutes. Your time starts now. This is not my forte. Isn't it? I would imagine Tim Vine will go for 60 darts from 10 metres away. The 60 darts there, is it? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Must be a real quandary for you, Tim, because you are a proper good darts player. Mm. I've, I've seen you in action. Well, it's just, just weighing the thing up of, you know, do you, can you get enough with three darts? But playing outside, even from a normal regulation distance, the, the wind does, does come into play. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. Well, first up to one of the three Oki options are Asim and Lisa Tarbuck. The, the idiot in me, which is a big part of me, wants me to do 60 darts because it's not really a thing of skill, it's a thing of chance, right? So if I just go mental and just that, you never know, but stu it's stupid. Well, is that 2.37? It is. Yeah, I've got to go for the three off of that, haven't I? Have you? Yeah. I'm going to go for three here. I want to do it. The annoying thing about the 20 is that it's right next to the one and five. Oh, fuck. Three. No, two. Double in it. Sixteen. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Dramatic sign off of a kiss. <laughs> yeah. And then a ten. Fuck. <laughs> 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 just to say, just to clarify the scores, Lisa on, got then. thirty-two, which is a double Asim who got he got sixteen. Okay, well listen, that's the end of that leg. We'll see if Tim Vine is good enough at darts to save his Elvis hair after the break. Every one of you, this is Taskmaster, where we have a hot darts competition on the go. Isn't that right, Alex? Yes, it's very hot, and you're very right, and you're very hot. From the standard Oki, <laughs> from the standard Oki position of 2.37 metres, which is exactly your height. It is. It is. Asim Chowdhury scored 16 in his attempt, and Lisa Tarbuck scored an impressive 32. Up next 
is the Dart semi pro himself, Tim Vine, versus the wild card, Russell Howard. Ooh. Let's have a look. Let me tell you a bit about darts, Alex. I, I play a bit of darts. You've got a big crosswind here. Um, it's a bit behind you, actually. Three darts is not much area for. <sighs> where, where is the 10? That's the 10. Oh, fucking in for a penny. We'll go for this, yeah? Yeah, you More got, fun, innit? You've got just less than 10 minutes. OK. How, how is your darts? What? How is your darts? Not great. All right. I think the question, because I think really throwing three darts in here, even though I would say, you know, if it was no wind and I was feeling confident, then, then maybe I'm... Yeah. I've got my range in now. So the question really is, can I hit the board more than three times out of 60 darts? Right, this is it. I'm going to go for 60 darts from this distance. You've got five and a half minutes. Right. Oh, come on, fine. <laughs> right, and this is something going wrong here. <laughs> Hit the blooming button. <laughs> it's physically not possible what I'm doing. Man. It just looks like just looks like waste now. Let yourself down, Vine. Oh. One of the things I enjoyed most about it was just the off-screen ting of I despair. Kept, no, but like that ting was was the, the centre pole. I hit it about four times. <laughs> Should have gone higher. <laughs> I'm going to say this to you. I've known you for a long time, Russell. Yeah. And I genuinely mean this. I actually found you quite sexy in that. <laughs> <laughs> do you know why? Why? It's because you didn't care that much. Yeah. You decided quickly what you were going to do. Yeah. And then you're a natural sportsman and you just started wanging him into the board and I just wanted you to take me away. <laughs> <laughs> and he smashed his melon up. He got all punk yeah. at the end. I tell you what, I was pretty angry with the melon afterwards, but I just didn't, you know, I, I said a couple of things to it. But, Too yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can show you exactly what numbers Russell hit with his successful darts. Mm. Okay. That was his score. See, look at ah. that. Oh. He scored three. <laughs> <laughs> and what did Tim get? I bet he did well now, didn't he? I can tell you that fewer of Tim's hit the board. But yeah. I feel a butt coming. I do. Uh, not yeah. enough of a butt. Lisa got 32. She did. Yeah. Tim Vine scored, as you can see. 29. Oh, that's right. 29. Oh, that's not bad. Not bad. <laughs> Next up, it's Alice Levine. Here we go. I don't even know whether... I mean, obviously, I'm not an idiot. Well, not obviously. I'm not an idiot. So I know the middle is a high score. But I don't really even know how you calculate the score other than the bullseye. There are numbers on the board, Alice. Do you know what? I'm going to go one for one. This one's nice. Oh, I've broken that one. OK. <laughs> Do you think that bit matters? Which bit? The 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 um the hat bit. The, the wings. Yeah. It's called the wings. Yeah. Could you ask me if the wings matter? <laughs> Do the wings matter? The wings? <laughs> Is it not called the wings? No. What's it called? The flight. Fine. Okay. Is it worth anything on the black bit on the outside? I don't think so. Oh, that's what I was going to go for. Come on. Very close to that triple, isn't it? That's what I was going for, yeah. Thank you, Alice. Thank you. <laughs> oh, God. Who would have thought it was possible for that to be made any more tragic? <laughs> <laughs> Did you ask if you can score on the outside <laughs> ring of the dot? With fairness to me, the number is by the black bit. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you, Alice scored 13, 13, which is 10 more than Russell, and Russell used 59 darts more than her. <laughs> and from a metre, you could have pretty much put it in. Excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> 
He didn't use the lean, that's what he's saying. The lean? Yeah. Is that the green bit? That's, oh, that's the wings. What is that? <laughs> the flight? No, you need that there. Oh, a physical, physical lean. Oh, physical lean. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Russell, I'm afraid, is in last with three. Alice. Well, ten for sexy points. <laughs> <laughs> right, Greg? No. <laughs> So there goes Alice, Asim, Tim, but with 32, Lisa is the winner. Yeah. And gets five points. Yeah. 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 Very good. It's usually around this time that we see a scoreboard, Alex, right? Yes. Yes, exactly now. Ready? <laughs> Ready. We've got joint second place, but joint first place as well. Tim and Lisa, joint hey. first with nine points. Yeah. Very good. Let's crack on. Let's have another task. What is it? It's time for our first Team task. Ooh. Ooh. So here is an introduction to whet your appetite. How long have you been there for? <laughs> nice suit. Wow, you look nice. I like the blue. The suit you look lovely. really good on it. So shall I um? Extract this. Keep Alex dry. Driest Alex wins. You may not touch Alex at any point. Wouldn't want to. You may not be within the compass when the shower is on. The shower will be turned on for two minutes in two minutes from now. So I say we go to the shed and find something that... Uh, a platform or a, like a... Yeah, an okay, umbrella. Or tarpaulin or... Yeah, yeah. OK. It's we may possible. not be in there when the shower's on, but yes. it's not on now, so let's no. put a bin bag over here. It's dying in two minutes, the shower. Uh, bin bags or tarpen tarpeters? What's a tarpeter? No, tarpen tarpeter. Tarpe 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 Words get lodged in my head beyond a certain age. They all run off to look for a tarpeter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's your power, one. Lisa Tarbuck. That's Is your it? power. Well, do you want to know why we've teamed them up in their teams? Because we've got the teams of Alice and Russell and, of course, Asim, Lisa and Tim. Yeah, I'd, li we, I'd like to know. We, what... we group them like that um, because of their work schedules. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Who are we going to see first? We're going to see team Tim, Lisa and Asim first. Did they manage to keep me nice and dry? I don't know. I haven't seen it. No, OK. Yeah. <laughs> I've got bin bags here. Have you? Yeah, yeah. Loads? Loads, yeah. This for his head. Oh, hang on. Let's get one of these on him and then let's pop that over. That's good, because that if he had that first, that might stop him suffocating. Hang on a minute. All right, now let's put this over him like that. Yeah. Five seconds. Oh, quick, quick, quick. We need another bin bag over the top, don't we? Okay, yeah. Are we allowed just to block the shower off? Go and lift your feet, please, Alex. Get out! Come on, get out! <laughs> good work. Okay. How's good? Yeah, the bag's good. Okay. Let's keep it off his feet there, look. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, really, really good. good. Oh, we've got a lot bad, on his trousers, yeah. His back is going to be dry. His front isn't, though, is it? Yeah. <laughs> and put it... Oh, no, that... that... Oh, yeah, that Ooh, is that's good, but, yeah. Oh, uh, all right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. Going, you screamed oh. as if what you were actually doing was blowing up some of those industrial towers. I was really <laughs> it was just a shower coming up. And working with other people, it was thrilling. <laughs> I loved it. Um, you worked very hard to get the tarpeters ready. <laughs> <laughs> Tim helped put the tarpeters on. Put the tarpeters on. When the shower started to flow, Tim used his initiative, started diverting the water. Yes, while staying outside of the while circle. While staying outside of the circle. Asked him. <laughs> Stuck a plastic bowl on your head. <laughs> I was really keen to get that on as well because I noticed that was all I contributed. Uh, it, so I was like, don't forget the bowl. It wasn't a bad effort. How wet did you feel? Somewhere between soggy and damp, I suppose. Yeah. Moist. 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 Yeah. Well, that's the end of part two. Oh. Gone. Oh. Just like that. Oh. There's part three coming and it brings more promise of more excitement. Bye.
It's Taskmaster, it's part three, and it's over to little Alex Horn. Thank you. This one is called Ache. Ah. Uh, <laughs> it, and it's, it's a mid-shave, so you use this while shaving, and it aids the shave, because it's made of Chinese five spice and ground-up razor blades. So it, it, <laughs> it, it, helps, it helps remove... So we're going to move on to <laughs> the second team. We've seen Asim, Lisa and Tim try to keep me dry. They partly succeeded. I was only a little bit wet and quite upset. Up next are Russell and Alice. Okay. They're cool. Hey, what? Just yes. try and get a cheeky, slick little rhyme in. I've got another one. <laughs> All right. Ready? Yep. Up next are Russell and Alice. They're cool kids and this is what they did. <laughs> How heavy is this? Could we hold this over? It's too heavy, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I was just thinking that. Too... Yeah, yeah, oh, it's yeah. not that heavy for two minutes. Yeah, that's all right, isn't it? Yeah, well, let's take that back first and see... Is there anything see else? If that that's... goes over. Should we quickly try this and see if that works? Well, wait, actually, why don't we just hold... Rather than cover him, cover the shower? So... Don't touch Alex at any point, though. Feels like he's going to work. Or we could just turn the hose off. Whoa. If we disconnect it, it makes it go over here. <laughs> we'll put it down there. Let's get a, let's get a hair dryer and really dry him up as well. Is there any dry white wine? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Okay. And this is a this is a dry martini. Dry martini. Yeah. We're going to hair dry you as well. Is on. Yeah, well, it looks like you're pretty dry, eh? <laughs> I mean, sometimes on the show, you just have to just put your hand up and go, they just absolutely yeah. knocked it out of the park. So, the shower, yeah. the bit above him, was that... On. Well, we took, yeah, they turned it on, but it didn't work. Yeah, the shower so, was on, but it was disconnected on. because Team Funk went and busted. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just clarify, we haven't settled on Team Funk. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> By the end, I was very dry. I was drier than I was before. I was like a raisin. <laughs> OK, I'm going to give um, four points to Alison Russell and one point to the other team. What? They don't what? Even four? Just... One. They seem happy with that, so, yeah. That's okay. Yeah, that's cool. Let's move on. I mean, yeah, thank you. Four, four, one, one. Yeah. We're shifting now. What else have we got, Alex? We are shifting, aren't we? We've got a different sort of task now. Here it is. Hello, Alex. Asim Chowdhury. How you doing, mate? I'm good, thank you. Hello. Hello, Russell. Good luck. Thank you. Take a picture of a group of people, each holding an egg. <laughs> Most people holding eggs in a picture wins. You must be in your picture. You have one week to text the picture to the taskmaster's assistant. Yeah, next Thursday, five past three, I'd like a picture of you. With a lot of eggs. And a lot of people. Up me. Pardon? <laughs> If I was gigging at the moment, I could definitely win. I'm not doing any shows. All right. Well, good luck. Thank you. Nice <laughs> joke. Right, so, so, simple. A picture of as many people as possible holding an egg. They've got to be in the picture as well? Yep. That's it? They had a week to do it? Yep. OK, this is Lisa's. Wow. There are 85 eggs there. It's clearly Photoshop. <laughs> Did it say in the instructions that you couldn't do that? Nope. We can zoom in. You can see Lisa. She's sort of mid-right. There right. she is. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it's a, a good idea. Mm -hmm. let's, let's have a look at Asim's. OK. I just put a thing out saying, send me pictures with eggs. <laughs> and, uh... You put a thing out, social media? Yeah. And you've got those nine people? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we've got There's 14 Alex. there. 14 egg holders, but they're real people. So this is a more straightforward approach. Right. Alice, yeah. her workmate, that's Radio mm -hmm. 1. Mm -hmm. And they're holding chocolate <laughs> eggs up. Yeah, we just went for chocolate eggs. It's max of minimal effort to me. Sure, sure. <laughs> also, women do work at Radio 1, I must stress. Um... <laughs> Let's have a look at Russell's. This is uh, me with the uh, cricket team, the Mumbai Blasters. You can see my mum there in the middle, very excited. <laughs> Give me some stats. Well, we haven't seen Tim yet, but we've got nine. Nine. And then we've got 11. Yeah. And then we've got 85 and 23. Yeah, but they're 85 rogues. Can it? <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, Tim Bryan had a fifth approach. Okay. Oh. 
That's uh, an infinite number of me's holding an infinite number of eggs. The photographer is my local butcher. <laughs> How many eggs can you see in the picture? Well, it just goes on and on forever. Doesn't it, it doesn't, though, does it, mate? Well, it does a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, then, Greg. I think, um, you know, there's some pictures of people holding eggs. Whether they're real eggs or not, it doesn't matter. In last place, it's got to be Alice. No, because Tim. there's only nine hipsters there's holding eggs. There's only two. Egg. Okay. One, one butcher point... and one non butcher <laughs> in that one. I I'll decide this. Six, seven. I can see eight people holding eggs. So do I Do I not come last anymore? No, you don't, because you've got nine useless hipsters holding eggs up. <laughs> you're, you're not happy with it? No, I'm fine. Yeah, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's just a game, mate. Exactly. I'm just nice to be out of the house. Just a bit of fun. <laughs> Alice and I have got two points. Yeah, good. Um, right. Whereas Tim's only got one point now. Yeah, ask him. There's 14 people. Russell, okay. there's 23 people. Right. Lisa, there's hundreds of eggs. She gets the five points. So, Lisa, five points Lisa Dabba. Time to start another one, I'd say. OK, this is a task that wound up a little man. <laughs> that was me trying to come out as quick as possible. I'm actually not very familiar with doors. That, that bit there was... Right. <laughs> Hello, Tim. Hello. <laughs> what the dickens? Oh. Make this wind-up little man go on the most extraordinary journey. You have 30 minutes. Your time starts now. See, I'm trying to think of something other than just, like, a long journey. The motion of the winding, it doesn't say has to be how he goes on his journey. No. I think we're going to head out to the road, lads. And we're going to give this... this guy... The ride of his life, quite literally. Pretty mm -hmm. straightforward. Yep. It's an extraordinary journey of the little wind-up man. Little wind-up man on a penny farthing. He had a moustache and no eyes, like Hitler. Except for the eyes... And the hat. And the, <laughs> and the penny, penny farthing, yeah. Shouldn't have mentioned Hitler. <laughs> so, <laughs> who are we going to see first? Should we see Lisa Tarbuck first? Yes. Yay. OK, this is Lisa's extraordinary journey. So, I've got the little guy here, and what I'm thinking of is to get him from one side of the road to the other. He's outside. It's, it's life or death. Has, has you don't get outside? more extraordinary. Has he been outside before? I don't know. I haven't asked him. He's okay. terse. I don't even really like him. Ah. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, oh. Dead, no, he's not dead. There's life in him, isn't there? <laughs> I don't like it. Oh, you're all right. He didn't feel a thing. He was alive. I was scared that he he was in pain. You didn't need to put him out of his misery. I did. It was horrible. <laughs> look at his head. I want to look at his head. At the beginning of the extraordinary journey you sent your man on, you just muttered almost to yourself, I don't even like it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, he was so tinny. I mean, none of us knew you were going to do the stamp, and it was quite harrowing. Yeah. You were upset. You did look genuinely upset. He well, was. Also, at the time, it was the only little man we had. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to see Russell Howard's little man journey? Oh, I do. OK. Right, you ready? Yep. So, he's about to go on a physical journey and a spiritual one. And who am I? You're the Buddha, so hit him with a quote. The root of suffering is attachment. Bit more, bit more preachy. Come on, mate. You can only lose what you cling to. That's better. I'm going to get him up there. OK. Peace comes from within. Do yep. not seek it without. Sort of more spiritual. I am doing it spiritually. Well, you know, do it a bit more flamboyantly, mate. Rule your mind, or it will rule you. Oh, no, you're saying it. I'm saying it very you well. You sound like a geography teacher. I need you to say it like the Buddha. The root of suffering is attachment. Right, he's right at the top I'm now. I'm ready. The mind is everything. What you think you become. Right, I'm going to let him go. You're right. Okay, I'm ready. Right, here we go, Buddha. Right, here he goes. Here he comes! Oh, you. No! Yes! And that's why people follow you. 
Normally, when you see someone uh, talking about their faith, it tends yeah. to be in a very soft, gentle way. But you were encouraging Alex as if you were a football manager. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's it. More spiritual. <laughs> Say it more spiritual. Well, I, I really loved it. Who's next? We're going to see Tim Vine's attempt. How's it going, Tim? Yeah, good. He's going to go to uh, a fir tree summit. Fir tree summit. That hasn't happened. <gasps> Yes, come on! That's it! He's there! And obviously the key to a journey is that he returns. <laughs> oh, that hasn't happened. Let me just think about this. How long have I got? 12 minutes. Come on, minion! Oh, flip! Right, come on, boy. Come on. Flip it, egg. Finish. You've done your journey. Thank you, Tim. You named him Midian. Midian, you little man. Right. Why did you go for Midian? Well, it wasn't me who went for it, as you put it. It was uh, his parents. <laughs> <laughs> the string was tied around Midian's neck. So you did sort of... <laughs> you sort of lynched Midian. <laughs> Very different story, isn't it? Very different journey. <laughs> from being alive to being lynched. <laughs> but, you know, why are we being angry with Tim for that? Lisa, kick the shit out of her. <laughs> OK, we all need to break once in a while, and that while is now. Then it's part four, when we discover who gets to take home Alice Levine's hairball. <laughs> Hello. Welcome back to Taskmaster. It's the final part of the show, and Tim Vine is getting more and more nervous about losing his precious Elvis hair. Where were we then, Alex? We were trying to send a little man on an extraordinary journey, Greg, and so far he's been on a voyage of self-discovery with Russell, he's been up a tree with Tim, and he's had his life abruptly ended by Lisa Tarbuck's foot. <laughs> Next up, it's Alice Levine. Where would be cool to take a journey to? That's about as far as you can go. Southern Hemisphere. Um, so, yeah, I might send him to my cousin. OK. Hi, Heather and Ava and Freya. I was hoping you girls could help me. I need to send this little guy on an extraordinary journey for a challenge that I'm doing. Is there any way you could take him to the beach with you or to a good old Australian barbecue and send me a picture? Lots of love, Alice. Well, I'm just going to take this to the post office. OK. And you're happy to approve airmail? I approve. You've got 11 minutes to get there. OK. BRB. <laughs> BRB. So what happened? You posted in? Yeah. And? We I don't like know it. where he is. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we know where he is? I had to call home to get the address for where my cousin lived. And my dad was like, no problem. And then basically gave me an address from about 38 years ago. <laughs> so, um, but, but he definitely had a great journey and adventure in the postal system, uh, both in the UK know. and potentially abroad. He could still be in the UK. I think he died alone in a bag. Oh. <laughs> he died alone in a bag. God you smashed God. the shit out of him. You brainwashed him in some cult what? and you lynched him. Oh, he's not. <laughs> Asim's got a very good point, I think, that all of these people have shown scant regard for a uh, small moustached man's uh, safety. Uh, well, well, no, 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 no. The view, yeah. the view from Fir Tree Summit is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Let's have a look at Asim's and okay. if it's shit, <laughs> woohoo, there's going to be hell to pay. There we go, mate. Now listen to me. Be careful, all right? There's going to be some monsters down there, but I believe in you. And I believe in that girthy moustache he's got. It's very powerful, mate, all right? Godspeed! Cycling! 
cool, fight cool. Watch out, watch out! Fire! <laughs> Monsters! Fucking loads of dangerous shit. Come on! <laughs> Come on, you can do it, man. I believe in you. Come on, come on, come on, come on! Come on, mate! Come on. You made it! I mean, I loved it. Thank yeah. you. And you're taking directing to a new level as well, but yeah. by adding and shit after. <laughs> <laughs> I just tried my best and shit. The idea of Spielberg pitching E.T. <laughs> oh, he's got a long finger and shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to make a very quick decision on this. I'm going to separate one person because of the honesty of her destruction. You know, if you are going to kill a small man, <laughs> at least be blatant about it and say, <laughs> I don't like the guy and snap his head off. Okay. <laughs> so, for that reason, I'm putting Asim in first place, Lisa in second, and joint third place with three points each of the other three. Thank you. Okay, what? the winner is Asim Chowdhury. <laughs> got one, got one. Can we see a late in the day scoreboard, Alex, please? <laughs> yes, we can. Uh, we have an outright leader, Lisa Tarbox, on 19 Bam. points. Can everyone please make their way to the stage for the final task of the show? <laughs> it's fascinating, Alex. Who's going to read the task out? Ask him. OK. <laughs> when instructed, put your grape in either your mouth or your hand whilst staring at the taskmaster. You must then answer the taskmaster's question and fool the taskmaster into thinking your grape is not where your grape is. You, you must not eat your grape. Your answer must contain at least five words. If the taskmaster correctly guesses where your grape is, you are eliminated. You get a grape, yeah. you can put it in your hand or you can pop it in your mouth. Then I'm going to ask you a question that you have to answer in detail. And at the end of your answer, I will guess whether your grape is in your hand or your mouth. Right. If you fool him, you stay in. If you don't, you go out. Whoever's still standing at the end of that gets five points. OK, so if you want to take a grape... Don't do anything with it yet. And we're going to start with the person in first place, which is Lisa Tarbuck. Let's go then. OK. <laughs> Put it in your hand or mouth and I'm going to ask you a question. What's the best way to tame a horse? I'm afraid you've lost me there. OK. Greg, where is Lisa's grape? The grape is in Lisa's hand. Lisa, where's your grape? Out. <laughs> Happy to take it, yeah. <laughs> Russell Howard, you're next. Please put your grape in either your hand or your mouth. <laughs> you're in a fight with Theresa May's husband. <laughs> How are you going to take him down? Hit him as hard as I possibly could. <laughs> And I would then look at Theresa May and I would say, if you don't correct me from the NHS, I will finish him. <laughs> OK. I believe it's great to be in Russell's hand. Russell, where is your great? <gasps> oh! We'll now move on to Tim Vine. What's the physically biggest cat you've ever seen, Tim? <laughs> biggest cat? <laughs> Burger. <laughs> cat I've ever seen is a... <laughs> is a tiger. <laughs> I believe Tim's great to be in his hand. Bam! Oh! <laughs> Alice Levine, next. Are, are they staying there? Mm -hmm. Never. There's a ring at your door. It's Barry Gibb from the Bee Gees. <laughs> Thinking back to what you currently have in your fridge, what are you going to offer Barry as a lovely snack? <laughs> Hummus. Hummus. <laughs> Hummus and celery, cos it's healthy. Where is Alice Levine's grape? In Alice's hand. Yes! yes. Oh. Well, Alice Travis, please put your grape in your mouth or your hand. 
Ah, oh. Uh, what is the best Japanese short story that you know? <laughs> Not really into uh, Japanese stories. I like uh, Chinese <laughs> stories and hentai. I believe the grape to be an Assam's hand. Where is your grape? For fuck's sake. <laughs> so that's the is out. It's, it's a head to head. It's Russell Howard to play first. Okay. Shoot. What are your um, favourite words that begin with S? Sutu. Sausage. Serendipity. It's so creepy. <laughs> fool me once, you won't fool me again. It's in your hand. Yeah! Oh. Can we, is it, can we check it? it in your mouth? It's in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest with you, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I think you have to take a step back. If, if Tim Vine fools you, he's won the five points. If he doesn't, no one gets any points, and that's the end of that. Shh. Oh. It's a big moment. It's a big moment. Tim, please yes. put your grape in your hand or your mouth. I will. In a German accent. <laughs> <laughs> Could you tell me the best way to mount a trampoline? That is very simple. <laughs> Take a small donkey. <laughs> line it up with the trampoline and climb on. Well, I think Tim's grape... Is in his hand. Bums on seats. <laughs> <laughs> no one gets any points. <laughs> Come down. Let's see how that's affected the final score. <laughs> what happened there, then, Alex? Well, in a way, there was no point doing any of it because no one got any any points. <laughs> but I could it's introduce. Not just about the winning, though, no. is it? It's about some gladiators yeah. hiding their grapes. And also my brand new my brand new fragrance. I've, have I got time to? No, you haven't. It's my roll-on. You drink it. <laughs> oh. oh! Oh! Right, do you want some scores? Yes, please. Well, Alice and Asim are in last place. Joint second, Russell and Tim, but the winner is Lisa with 19 points! <laughs> Unbelievable! Lisa has won. Lisa, please head up and collect your collection of hair! So, what have we learned today? We've learned that if your beloved pet is injured in a roadside accident, don't call Lisa Tarbuck. <laughs> She'll stamp on it and then cover its corpse in a tarpeter. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, someone won the show, and coincidentally, that person is Lisa Tarbuck. Huge congratulations <laughs> to her. Yes, victory. Good night to you all. Good night. <laughs>